Seven things you probably didn't know, you need to know. I'm Jamie East and this, this is the Smart 7. It's Tuesday the 14th of April 2020 and a big happy birthday to Adrian Brody and Buffy the Vampire Slayer, otherwise known as Sarah Michelle Geller. It's also International Dolphin Day. The total number of cases for coronavirus is now very close to 2 million worldwide, with the death toll rising to almost 120,000. The United States continues to be the worst-hit nation, with over a quarter of all cases. This is a time for calm and rational leadership, you might think. Unfortunately, President Donald J. Trump is not displaying the characteristics that you might hope for in times like these. His press conference yesterday was off the charts. He opened with a video montage of his previous pronouncements on coronavirus. He claimed the US president has absolute power, Yoda, and he made sure to thank Russia's Vladimir Putin. Here's CBS reporter Paula Reid patiently asking what the US administration did in February to plan for the outbreak. What did your administration do in February with the time that your travel ban thought? A lot. A lot. And in fact, we'll give you a list. What we did, in fact, part of it was up there. We did a lot. Look, look. You know you're a fake. You know that your whole network, the way you cover it, is fake. And most of you, and not all of you, but the people are wise to you. That's why you have a lower a lower approval rating than you've ever had before, times probably three. And when you ask me that question, let me ask you this. Why didn't Biden, why didn't, why did Biden apologize? Why did he write a letter of apology? No, that's very important. Why did the Democrats think that I acted too quickly? You know why? Because they really thought that I acted too quickly. In the UK, with Boris still recuperating, Dominic Raab took yesterday's press conference with unease growing over the availability of both PPE for healthcare workers and ventilators. If you're wondering when the lockdown might end, it certainly won't be this week, as the UK death toll is now over 11,000 with no real sign of light at the end of the tunnel. This week, SAGE will review the evidence of the effectiveness of the social distancing measures that we've taken, and we will consider their evidence, uh, their assessment, based on the evidence at that point. I should say we don't expect to make any changes to the measures currently in place at that point, and we won't until we're confident, as confident as we realistically can be, that any such changes can be safely made. As the lockdown continues, most sports fans have taken comfort in classic games with Sky Sports effectively becoming the history channel. Golf courses lie empty, apart from the occasional rogue sunbather, but golfers are still holding out hopes that the Ryder Cup, which is due to take place in Whistling Straits, Wisconsin at the end of September, might just have a chance to go ahead. Here's European captain Paul Rig Harrington refusing to give up hope. It is due to go on in September. It's holding its date. It's the last big sporting event of the year. Uh, so, yeah, it's, that's the plan. Obviously, I can't tell what governments and this virus are going to do. Who knows, come September, hopefully we'll be through the, the virus or most of us. But, you know, what, what's going to be with travel restrictions and, and things like that, I don't know. There's nothing better than some escapist TV in these times. And one of the worldwide hits from the last few years, Killing Eve, returned for its third series, with the first episode appearing as if by magic on the BBC iPlayer yesterday. Fans will be delighted to see that Eve, played by Jodie Comer, is as crazy delightful as ever. When I think about my ex today, I realise I am so much happier now she's dead. You know, you really shouldn't leave your front door open considering the amount of No spoilers, that kill but you. South Park were on. Oh my God, they killed Kenny! Three. Another dramatic TV show also started yesterday. It's the true story behind one of the greatest quiz show stories in British TV. It's called, well, Quiz, actually. Anyway, it tells the story of the man who tried to fix who wants to be a millionaire by coughing. It started last night, it's available on Catch Up, and it's on tonight and tomorrow night on ITV. If you haven't seen Michael Sheen playing Chris Tarrant, you need to. He's amazing. No, actually, God, that was bad. I just can't get my head round it. That terribly nice major, a criminal mastermind. You really didn't notice anything, 
Well, I, I, I suppose you've got a lot going on. Well, yeah, but I'd hope that I'd have done this enough to notice if someone's trying to steal a million quid two feet in front of me, Paul. No, I feel upset, actually. This, well, this is our thing. It's our baby. No one will dare try anything like this again. Who the hell was coughing? We now cross to France for a story that is perfect for a metaphor for these crazy times. A 64-year-old executive for a defence company got a present from his co-workers. So far, so bon, as you might say. That means good. The present was a trip in a fighter jet. Not so bon. The man was afraid to fly, but also afraid to upset his generous colleagues. As the plane hit over 300 miles per hour and about 3.7 Gs of force, our Ami floated up out of his seat due to a loose seatbelt. In a panic, he accidentally pulled the eject lever. Mon Dieu! Thankfully, despite losing his helmet, steady, he managed to land safely in a soft field. Investigations are continuing. Good morning. And finally, we're back on Zoom for music. This time, it's Sting, the tantric yoga hero we all need, is here with a reworking of a classic, live on Jimmy Fallon with The Roots. Enjoy. This has been the Smart Set. Stay safe, stay distant, and wash those blooming hands. We're back tomorrow at 7 a.m. Like and subscribe wherever you get your podcast. I'm Tilly Steele. And I'm Helen Monks. And this is Bitchin'. I'm dyslexic. Yeah, why do you read the (laughs) Wikipedia page? It's good to practice. A podcast where every week we talk about a different person. So how old was he when he first popped on the scene? That's a great question. If you say he was my age, I'm gonna (laughs) die. And we veer wildly off track. Pop that Prosec. (laughs) Available on all your podcast apps. That's not right. Uh, Can you not say er in the advert? (laughs) Available on all your podcast platforms. Just search Bitchin' or Great Big Owl. We'll see you there. That was all right.